in this video. At the request of subscribers, I have finally decided to throw in my hat as to what the best Linux distribution is. I've thought about it for quite a while, and I am going to tell you what I think the best Linux distribution is, all things considered, but also the easiest Linux distribution, all things considered. Well, the answer might surprise you. I should put that in the video title or something. Now, you may know that I did a video a couple years ago. In fact, it's one of my most popular videos on Linux distributions generally. And my narrative on Linux distributions, for anyone who is new to Linux, your, the narrative should be distros don't matter. They are social constructs. Once you gain a certain level of confidence in Linux, it is very easy to change the desktop environment and all this kind of stuff that people fixate on when they usually talk about distributions. Okay, so that is my general stance on distributions. But all things considered, I think that there is one, and I, I wouldn't have said this a year ago. I probably wouldn't have even said this a month ago, but there's one distribution that I think is a little special. That distribution is Arch Linux, okay? Now, that might be a weird answer, because Arch Linux, you hear about it all the time. You would think I'd cho choose something more special, right? Um, but Arch Linux, again, I think it's the best Linux distribution. I also think that it is the easiest. Now, me saying that might sound like a ca kind of Zen koan. You might think I'm playing a trick on you. It's like, what, what did he mean by this? Well, what I mean by that, well, I'll, I'll, I'll say two things, uh, two general topics. The one thing about Arch Linux is that it, despite the fact that there are some initial hurdles, like the manual installation process, which actually does you a good favor, and we'll talk about that later, but despite those initial hurdles in Arch Linux, Arch Linux does better than any other distribution I've used at avoiding the pain that you might have to put up with in managing any kind of system, be that Linux or Windows or anything else, okay? Um, that is, people often think about the hardness of Arch Linux being installed. I am thinking about lifelong hardness. Say it with me, lifelong hardness. That is what I'm thinking about, and I'll talk about that in a second. The other thing that I think makes Arch Linux an, extreme, an, an exceptionally good distribution, ironically enough, is something that I guess is in, in the heart of those who use it. That is, Arch Linux, more than any other distribution, has the most potential to change the way that people think about Linux distributions, because partially because it is one of those distributions that you install manually and you go through the process, compared to other distributions, like for example, Gentoo, when you're making your own kernel and compiling it and stuff like that, Arch is easier. But it also gives you enough, it gives you exactly what you need to really understand how your system works. Well, let's talk about those two points briefly. Okay, so lifelong hardness. Now, he, here's the thing about Arch Linux. Um, let, let's ignore the installation process, okay? Let's talk about managing a system. Now, one nice thing in Arch Linux is the fact that every program in the world is basically available to you. If it runs on Linux, you can easily get it on Arch Linux. Now, that sounds like something that's a little trivial, and you might say, okay, that's true of other distributions as well, but, but th I'll think about it this way. Uh, you know, I take this for granted as an Arch user, but when someone comes with me, you know, comes to me with a problem, it often is of the format of, uh, you know, there's one, there's, a, there's either a program that has a dependency that their distribution, you know, since it's not rolling release, it isn't keeping up with, or there's something they really want to install, but it's, you know, they have to figure out how to get it off Git and do all this custom compiling or, and stuff like that. The thing about Arch Linux, because it has its repositories and because it has the AUR, it is very easy for even an introductory user to use Arch Linux and be able to get so much out of it. That is, you can pretty much, you can, if you watch my channel, for example, I go over a lot of different programs, and if you like one of those on Arch Linux, you can install it basically instantaneously. It's probably going to be in the AUR or the main repos. Play around with it and get rid of it. That's not necessarily the case on other distributions, as I've actually recently found out. Um, if you want to compile some program on, program on Debian, Debian has lots of, you know, it, it has a great repository, it has some great stuff in it, but there's a lot of this, this minor stuff that it doesn't have, and installing that can sometimes be a big pain. Not just you can't do it on the command line easily with, you know, an AUR manager or something like that, but, it, it, you know, the, or, you know, Ubuntu having the PPAs, all the equivalents of the AUR are a much, much more difficult to use. And additionally, now I've said before, I don't actually care about Arch Linux being a rolling release distro, meaning updates come out all the time. But now that I think about it, that is actually a really good thing. 
if you're installing programs or playing around with new programs. Um, because a lot of the time, the development on these programs, you know, if you're some guy on GitHub who's making some program you want to play around with, um, a lot of times he is using the most recent version of, I, I don't know, Perl or Python. Well, they don't really, I don't think, have that many updates, but some kind of program or some kind of programming language or library. And they're using the most recent version. But if you're using some staggered release distribution, if you're using Ubuntu, and that thing is not automatically updated in the Ubuntu repositories, so you have to go through a big rigmarole of just getting something basic done. So Arch Linux, again, ignoring the install process, we'll talk about that in a second, but in terms of system management, it is so, there, there are so many headaches you just avoid in Arch Linux. Let me throw in another Zen Koan, actually, because I didn't say this before, I meant to, but Arch Linux, in addition to being the best distribution, I will say that it also has nothing particularly good about it. The good thing about Arch Linux is that it avoids pains like this. Not, I mean, I don't think it's all by design. I think it just happens to be how Arch has evolved, and I think it works extremely well. And I'll, I'll go ahead and tell you, well, let's, let's get into the second point, okay? As I said, the second point is using Arch Linux or going through the install process changes the way that people look at computers or changes the way they look at Unix or Linux or whatever. Because what happens, it, it might strike you when you are first tr thinking about using Arch Linux that installing it manually is just stupid. Why can't you have an automatic installer? There are lots of, oh, I'll just use Manjaro, or, oh, I'll use whatever. You know, that, that's fine. If you want to do that, that's fine. But there's a big difference in how that makes you think about the system. Huge difference. First off, when you, let's just talk about narrowly your system. For your system alone, if you install everything from, you know, the desktop manager or whatever, or the, you know what I mean, the display manager, the desktop environment, window manager, if you install that kind of stuff, if you install, you know, what kind of graphical settings or your network manager, all that, you, you read up on it in the process of installing it. But once you do that, you know what's on your system, you know how it works, you know how it interacts. It's not a difficult process. Uh, it's not a difficult process to do. And once you do that, you know where the pieces are going together. So what ends up happening is if hypothetically something breaks on your system, which frankly on Arch, things don't really spontaneously break, but if something acts in a way you don't expect it, if you, if you have gone through that minimal install process, you know what's going wrong. You, you don't have to you look it up on Stack Overflow or something. You generally know exactly what's going on. And it's not a big pro problem if something reacts in a way that you don't expect it. So that, it changes the way you look at distributions where a lot of times, I mean, as an example, a lot of times if you, if you Google search for something, if you're a Linux newbie, and you want to learn how do I change this audio setting on Ubuntu, you look that up on the internet or something, and you will get a guide that tells you how to click on the graphical environment in Ubuntu and change something. But of course, the graphical environment is not Linux. It, it's a graphical environment that interacts with your actual system indirectly. And, but when you install a system minimally, you actually have an idea of what's going on underneath. And that, because if you're using Arch, you have to go through this process, which again, is not that difficult. But once you do that, it gets rid of so many of the headaches that you would otherwise run into if you're using some kind of Linux distribution, or even if you're, I mean, even worse, if you're using, you know, Mac OS or Windows or something where you, you can't really do, if something goes, goes wrong, you just sort of have to grin and bear it if it's, you know, some system vital thing that you don't, you can't really change. So th there is that thing. And the other irony of this, uh, that comes from this, is the fact that I, I have had so many subscribers tell me this exact same story. They're using Fedora, they're using Ubuntu, they're using even Manjaro or another Arch-based distro, they're using Trisquil, they're using whatever. And they have a problem and they look all over the place and it's not there. But where do they eventually find the solution? They either find it on the Arch Wiki or they just ask on an Arch Linux forum and they will be able to tell you. Now, it's not because Arch Linux users are just like the greatest things in the universe. That's not what it's all about. You can be just like that. Um, it's just that all of them have gone through that process that sort of, I mean, it's like hazing. You know, the installation of Arch Linux is a hazing process. And once you've gone through that hazing process, you know what you're doing. And uh, even though, again, there are distributions that are more difficult to install than Arch Linux. If you install Gentoo, wow, that's an even bigger badge. But Arch Linux at least, at least gets you to that point where you understand what's going on 
on your system. So I know I said before years ago that Linux distributions, they're all pretty much the same. And I still agree with that. Um, I, I still hold by that. I'm not telling you in this video to switch to Arch Linux. Doesn't matter to me what you use. Doesn't, I mean, I don't think it makes a lick of difference. If you're used to whatever system you are, that's, that's fantastic. But I do think, and mind you, I've had many people who watch my channel and are Windows users and see my stuff and directly switch to Arch Linux, some of them even using my dot files. I think that's crazy, but um, if they can do it, you can do it too. And it's, it's not, just don't fall for the memes. It is not a difficult to use distro. The amount of thinking, the reason, in fact, I am only having this revelation now that I actually think that Arch Linux is a fantastic distribution. The only reason I'm saying it now is because on Arch Linux, you have to think about your distribution so little. You just don't think it doesn't hit it hit you in the head. You know, uh, you know, I was talking about how in that video, you know, how how much I used to distro hop and then I eventually just stopped. Maybe I just stopped because I found a distro where you don't have to think about the distro you're running. You have to think about what you've installed on your computer and you can easily change that. So again, to, the re to repeat the points, Arch Linux, I think it's probably the best and easiest to use distro, despite the fact that it might have a little hump at the beginning and in the install process. But I think over the long term, the long term hardness is very, very low of Arch Linux. That is, if you have, if you have hardness for more than eight hours on Arch Linux, consult your doctor, consult the Arch Wiki. It shouldn't be like that. But on other distributions, sometimes you have to go with you, you get a little frustrated because everything isn't quite in line. Arch Linux, again, it's not a good distribution. It just avoids a lot of pain. And the second part is dis distro structure, you know, ignoring the, all of that. The process of installing a system from the bottom up is a very educational experience. It's not a difficult experience. Remember, I did, if you go search up uh, install Arch Linux on YouTube right now and click on the first one with the SpongeBob meme in it, that is my video, and that video where I ex explain the Arch Linux installation process in excruciating detail, I think that was around 50 minutes. That is me explaining everything. So the process is not difficult. You can do it. So I encourage you, since it's, I, I don't know, it's, it's almost New Year's. You can make it new, your New Year's resolution to try Arch, but once I, once I used it, I, I never really looked back. And I, I've been using it for like years now, but I'd never really thought that, oh, maybe it's actually just a good distribution. Maybe that's why I stopped thinking about distributions in general. So that is my top one Linux distribution. Will it always be the top one Linux distribution? I don't know. Maybe there'll be another one. Maybe there'll be, uh, we never know what's gonna happen, but I'm gonna give my vote to Arch for the time being. So anyway, that's about it. I will see you guys next time. Hope this inspires you to do something or another. And uh, yeah, Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. I'll probably do another video before Christmas, but we'll, we'll, we'll see you guys next time.